Now, if you go to calculate the authority for, say, our, our TBVCM control valve here, so I'm totaling up all the frictional losses through the pipe, my losses through the coil, all the fittings, everything throughout that system becomes the denominator in that equation. So with the control valve pressure loss being the numerator, if I have a fairly large amount of system losses on the, the loop going around through to that control valve, I have very low authority or I have to increase the pressure drop on my control valve enough to be able to get to the, the valve authority I need. So let's talk about two different control valve arrangements. On my loop, I have two branches currently running and I, on each one I have a different means of controlling flow through the system. The first one, I'm using a manual balancing valve and then a quarter turn ball style control valve to, uh, to control flow through the system. So the, the manual balancing valve does the balancing, the control valve does the control. Pretty, pre pretty common application for um, systems like this. CV is selected uh, based off of the selections that the manufacturer will have. Usually there's about five or six per, per size range of different CVs. But if you look at the available CVs for those, there'll be wide gaps in between each other. Other issue is that um, most of your controls contractors don't always select the best control valve for the system. A lot of the time they'll take a one CV fits all for, for a system, or they don't really put the time into calculating flow or calculating the, uh, the, the actual CV requirement for that part of the system. So in order to get the control they need, they'll tend to oversize the control valve because then they know they'll be able to get the available flow through it. And then you're making the problem even worse because now you have to throw, since you have an oversized control valve, you have to throttle back on the balancing valve even further giving that balancing valve even more authority and taking more authority away from the control valve. Again, you're making the system worse by putting a, doing a one-size-fits-all. Now, the other option you have is to do an adjustable CV control, value, control valve. So now I have a control valve like our TBVCM, which has an adjustable CV rate. So instead of relying on a, a separate balancing valve, which, which robs authority, now I can do my balancing on the control valve, get to my design flow, say it's two GPM in this case, we'll balance this guy over here to two GPM as well. And now I have both systems balanced, but now my control valve also is my balancing valve. I'm giving all of the valve authority, all of the pressure drop for balancing and control to one valve, improving my valve authority. So we'll add the actuator to this. This is a slider 160 actuator designed to fit on the TBVCM, so it's as simple as threading the actuator on and calibrating it. And then we'll see what happens in control. So let's go back to our 70% of the time, you're only requiring 20% of the flow through the valve because 20% of the flow through the valve translates to 50% of your coil output, which is where most systems typically operate. So in order to do that, it's a characterized control valve, so we wanna take it to 50% of the signal, in this case it's 2 through 10 volts, so it's 6 volts. Take both of those to 6 volts and we'll allow them to operate. Now again, you notice that the slider gets there very quickly, so quicker control. Whereas our quarter turn valve is going to take a little while to get to the point where it needs to be. Now, while we're waiting for our quarter turn valve, we'll notice our slider and our TBVCM has brought us to roughly 20% of the flow rate for the system, so we're right at that 50% heat output for cooling output for the coil. Got there very quickly, and it's right where we need it to be. Now our, our other control valve has finally gotten there, but you'll notice that we're nowhere near where we need to be. We're at roughly 40% of the flow rate, so we're, we're twice the flow rate we need to be, so we're overflowing by 100%. Um, why is that? It's due to the lack of authority we've given the control valve. We're, we're basically taking all of the authority away by adding a separate balancing valve in order to be able to get the flow to where we need it for design point. 